So, uh, first off, I, I want to say how it it's, it's a true honor to be speaking uh, at this WordPress meetup. Uh, I know, because I host a lot of meetups as well, how much uh, hard work it is and dedication to bring people together, uh, especially Houston, where everybody's driving out from different areas, you know, fighting uh, rush hour traffic and and making it happen. So uh, I want to acknowledge Christina Hawkins for just constantly committing herself to making sure that she brings in these group of people on a monthly basis, which is not an easy task, uh, and all the hard work you have for, for you know, educating and, and, and bringing that community together. So a round of applause yeah. for Christina. It's not easy, so shout out. Labor you. love. Thank you, thank you. So. Um, Let's talk about podcasting. I know there was a few hands that, that went up. Uh, I'm really passionate about, about podcasting because uh, it's becoming a thing, right? And it's still relatively new to a lot of people, especially in the business world. Uh, and then with WordPress, uh, it's like it's our partner, you know, our dancing partner. You know, you usually have a podcast, and then if you're not on Anchor, you have a WordPress site to host it, which we're going to talk about that as well. So that's why I'm really excited to kind of dig into the WordPress aspect of where podcast fits in. So my thing is, I'm a branding guy. Uh, and by the way, let me just give you guys context. Uh, I'll give you the Twitter version of myself. Uh, and when I was a teenager, I was always uh, a curious kid. Uh, wanting to interview people, I always fantasized about being an MTV VJ, you know, being that Carson Daly type, uh, just having these conversations with, with creatives and, and remarkable thinkers and, and kind of get their background story. Um, got into, I was a very self-expressive, uh, creative, uh, breakdancing, you know, doing the tour, uh, touring with breakdancers, uh, very big on music. I was a musician for the bulk of my 20s. And then I got involved in interviewing, and I did like a, my own internet version of uh, Triple D. The di di what is it, Diners, Divers? Yeah, yeah, that show, okay, yeah, I would say Triple D. So anyways, I had my own version of that called Indie Loop, where I would go to small businesses and interview small business owners. So I started that on YouTube, and then I started a little company called Connected Creatives, which was focusing on bringing education uh, and community to the creative culture here in Houston. So I was very big on kind of dismantling this whole notion of starving artists and helping creatives become more equipped with marketing and branding and understanding how business works, right? Uh, it was a success. And then fast forward in 2017, I started my first podcast. Uh, and then uh, I dropped out of it and then just fell in love. I was just like, I really miss having these conversations with people. So I relaunched my podcast in early 2018. <laughs> Actually, it was late 2017. Um, and then I've interviewed over 500 uh, people. I have about over about 140 podcast episodes. I have, a, I have a show called No Permission Needed, which is still tailored to uh, the creatives, helping creatives become more equipped with uh, the mindset development, the personal development, uh, business as well. So uh, it's been an awesome journey being able to podcast. Uh, I've gotten a lot of speaking opportunities. I've been able to host meetups and events. Uh, speaking of meetups, I also started a uh, Pod Houston, which is Houston's biggest podcasting community. We host monthly meetups. Uh, we have some members right here, Shane and Don that attend. I know she, uh, Chandra is also part of the community online. So this is, I'm really trying to spearhead the, the podcasting community here in Houston. I know there's a lot of bloggers, a lot of people that are in WordPress development, but I think there's a lot of room to bring people in uh, into the podcasting world because there's a lot of benefits which uh, we'll dig into today. So uh, let's talk about brand authority and, and how you can use podcasting in your line of work. Let's get that. So this is what I'm going to cover. So what's a podcast, right, for those? I know some of you have podcasts, uh, but for those who don't know what a podcast is, we'll talk about that. Benefits of starting a podcast, uh, how to avoid the biggest podcasting mistakes, uh, how to funnel listeners and convert them into your WordPress site and five top WordPress plugins for podcasters uh, for you to check out. So let's jump right in. What is a podcast? Uh, it's simply radio on demand. Uh, true story, so about three years ago, uh, I was having a conversation with my mom, and my mom has always been confused like, you know, what I do. She's like, what do you do, by the way? I have no idea what you do. I said, well, I have a podcast, you know, I do podcasting. 
And she's like, I have no idea what it is. I'm like, well, and I try to explain her, well, yeah, it's kind of like radio on demand, and people download. Your, I interview people, they download the MP3, and they can listen at their convenience, et cetera. So she was like, okay, all right, sure. Uh, and she's been super supportive. Until about a month ago, I was uh, visiting her. Uh, we had some family dinner, and she had her iPhone app open. And I go, Mom, what is that? She's like, oh, it's, I'm listening to a podcast. <laughs> so you, I was like, high five, Mom. So, so you go, Mom is listening to a podcast. So it, it's grown, and again, she didn't know what it was, but now she knows what a podcast is. So that's what it is, guys. Radio on demand, listen to what you want, when you want. It's uh, MP3 that's uploaded to your to the you know, internet, WordPress, and then people can download at their convenience. That's the beauty of podcasting because, uh, like radio, right? There's morning radio, you really can't get the replay. Well, podcasts, uh, you can download it whenever you want and listen whenever you want. Uh, it's available at multiple distribution sites, meaning that podcast has uh, this ability to for example, in comparison to radio, yeah. move over here, give a shot. Uh, radio, where they, uh, you know, that's a syndicator, right? It's like local. Uh, sometimes the satellite, it's, it's, you know, global. But with podcasts, it's distributed to iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud. Those are just uh, a few to mention. There's many more that are emerging. It's done through an RSS feed, uh, which allows you to kind of shoot out that MP3 into the world. So whenever you publish, People from all over the world have access to your content, unlike radio. So podcast is not only just local, but it's a global distribution of content. So that's something you don't see uh, with radio. And then, of course, produced by anyone, right? Uh, it's not exclusive to the big dogs, right? Clear Channel, NPR, which, by the way, we'll talk about NPR because now they're all about podcasting, mm -hmm. right? They're heavy hitters now. And I said this, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was saying how... As podcasters, we really got to get on our game. Like, we really got to understand the importance of having great audio. Like, right, we talked about mm -hmm. Christina, like, leveling up after a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, definitely investing in, in um, microphones because the, the pros are coming. And sure enough, now NPR and a lot of the big dogs are here. And, and they're coming with their whole full production. So, uh, and we'll talk about that as well. So, that's pretty much what a podcast is. Um, let's talk about, so how many of you were listening to podcasts five years ago? Raise your hand. Five years ago, okay, Five. impressive, okay. And how many of you are now listening to podcasts today? Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry, okay. <laughs> who's in the pocket? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, yeah. Um, So this is the chart. Uh, five years ago, only about 13% of Americans were listening to podcasts. Uh, now, as you can see, it's grown, right? So you're seeing a steady growth uh, now we are uh, at 26% more or less, and these actually this is the, the current stats they released. So it's growing, and you're seeing it more and more. Um, a lot of automobile companies are adding podcasting. If you guys notice, maybe you may have it now in your, in your app, Jeep, I saw Wrangler, a lot of the, the new um, automobile industries or new cars are adding podcasting as a feature. And now I think the rise of, of smart speakers, right? Alexa, now you're seeing a rise of the audio movement. So audio is going to play an important role in our daily lives, including that's the reason why podcasting will continue to grow. So we're only at 26%. Now we're seeing that there's about there's over 500,000 uh, active podcasts right now on iTunes. Um, so it's, it's quite a few. And some people say, well, it's kind of saturated. Like there's a lot of people starting podcasts. There's a lot of bad ones for sure. But people are jumping into them because of the fact that they want to be able to, to build a brand authority, to kind of share what they want. Yes, yes. What do you mean by active? Like they're on? They're right, they actually like have like weekly podcasts. And there's some that are just dead, which I think iTunes is, they're very deliberate now. I think they released uh, an email saying that if you're not really posting, we're going to go ahead and delete you completely. Oh, wow. Yeah, so uh, they're, they're going to start really, really hammering down on inactive podcasts. <laughs> so over 500,000 more or less podcasts that are active. Um, as you can see, it's growing. Um, it, it's just a big market. I think there was about $75 million that were invested in podcast advertising. So uh, again, a lot of the advertisers are now understanding the importance of podcasts because why? When you have a podcast, let's say, for example, that's focused on WordPress or let's say a health um, 
fitness podcast. Um, as an advertiser, that brings a lot of interest to me because that's a targeted audience, meaning that I know that there are, let's say you have 10,000 downloads, there's 10,000 people, targeted people, that are in your earballs, I don't earballs, earballs, that are listening to me, and that's a targeted audience. So advertisers, instead of just posting on Facebook and just, or, or commercials, now they're like, let's go to podcasts because it's specific people that are listening that are tailored towards this industry. So there's a lot of money coming in to podcasts, which uh, brings in a lot of interest to people that want to start a podcast. And by the way, if you guys want to jump in, that's cool, man. If you guys want to jump in and ask some questions, we can do that as well, okay? Just stop me. So benefits of podcasting is simple and fun, enjoyment. It is a lot of fun, guys. I like the idea of having able to have access to the people that I admire, like people that I don't have access to, and to say, hey, listen, um, for example, in the marketing, Seth Godin, you released a new book. Can I bring you on the show? And I never get a no. I think I've gotten a no once, and it's all about timing. There's a strategy behind it. But whenever they're releasing a book, you contact them, and of course they want to promote books. So a lot of these online marketers, they want to jump on a podcast. Why? Because it's a specific target audience, and they want to talk about their book and whatever they got going on. So uh, it's fun, though. So I really, really enjoy just being able to talk to these influencers, uh, building like real like friendships with them. A lot of my friends have become through, uh, have uh, developed through podcasting. Um, and let's talk about fun. It doesn't have to be serious. So if you don't want to make it about your business, I mean, here's some examples. So the White Well, uh, it's very artsy. The guy's really into like audio, um, sound experimentation, and he just talks about just his, his love for audio. It's really a weird podcast, but <laughs> it works. Movie Crush with Chuck Bryant. Uh, all he does is he, um, he reviews movies and gets on his podcast, has over 20,000 downloads per episode, a uh, large audience, and he just loves movies and goes on and reviews them. The, how many Star Wars fans in here? Okay, cool. Mm. The Star Wars Minute. These guys are really hilarious. <laughs> Uh, all they do is just get real geeky uh, on the Star Wars. So they kind of break down like different theories and what they think of the uh, of, uh, certain characters. Uh, it's really, really fun, especially if you're a Star Wars fan like I am. So that's another one that's really huge, the Star Wars Minute. So again, a lot of people, if you don't want to start a podcast to, to build a brand authority or to, let's say, make a lot of money out of, I mean, I think this is just a great way. If you have a topic that you're passionate about, just start with, with something that you enjoy, like a passion, and then there is an audience for it. So this is a great way to start a podcast, simple and fun. It's economical, it's easy to maintain and start. You can actually have a podcast equipment set up for like less than $100 if you really want to get started. Uh, there's a lot of people, like my friend over here, he started on anchor.fm, so which is an app that you can download uh, A-N-C-H-O-R, and you can download it. And I would say if you want to taste what podcasting feels like, uh, it's a great way to start. Uh, you can start it. You can start your podcast. You can actually now, they have tools where you can do artwork on the app, mm -hmm. and you can just press record and say, hey, guys, this is the episode one, and you can publish it, and they shoot it out to a bunch of people, like iTunes, right? I think they iTunes, yeah, Stitcher iTunes, Radio. Yeah, iTunes, Stitcher, yeah. Outcast right. is a big one that's mm -hmm. new. And you so, are you going to be doing Anchor as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It gives you some data as well. And they get, yes, yes. So they're really upping their game. Now, a lot of like the old school podcasters like myself, uh, I'm always a little hesitant because what happens with Anchor, they own, uh, they own your RSS feed. So, mm -hmm. meaning you really, so if they shut down, you're done. So that's the only thing, but... You can't download the audio? You can't later on, all right, I recorded it and then go back and just download the audio yourself so I don't that think you, you can. It. I don't think you can. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I'm not on Anchor. Something to look but, into for well, sure. Right. If you record it before, because I'm going to do mine like on Audacity and then do all my editing yes. and then I'll upload it. So I'll mm -hmm. always have a copy. Have the MP3 okay. so you can yeah. always, just in case. But again, I, I don't think they're going anywhere. You want to say something? Are you going to uh, talk at all about like audacity and those? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, about soft. Yeah, I don't want to get too deep into the software, but if you guys have any questions, we'll have a Q&A and I could definitely answer any questions as far as software, hardware, and we'll, get, uh, we'll dig into that as well. So all you need is a microphone. It's all podcast is. A microphone, a computer, a hosting service, and that's all you need. 
Okay, so microphone and computer, and again, you're just recording an MP3 on your mic and you're uploading it to a hosting service. What is a hosting service? A hosting service are uh, basically uh, a hosting company that will host your audio. So you just upload the MP3 into this uh, company, actually it's like 10 bucks. 10 bucks, Lipson, uh, Stitcher Radio, there's a few others that are, are relatively cheap. Uh, and they basically host it and they distribute your audio out to iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, etc. So uh, it's super cheap uh, to get started. And then again, let's talk about the, the reason why you should start a podcast. It's just a really great way to connect with, with new listeners and, and build an audience. Um, it does create an intimate ecosystem in that, uh, unlike video, video is also very personal, but again, there's something about listening to somebody's voice you know, that, that creates this intimacy. And you can really kind of feel the person's passion, their sadness, anything, and there's something about it. Um, I've gotten, I've bumped into people who listen to the podcast and, and will say, hey man, you were really kind of down on that podcast. You were really kind of like a little, and it's weird, because people will read you, and sometimes I'm like, oh man, I gotta, <laughs> so, oh, man, that, was, that was a bad morning, I <laughs> really showcase that. <laughs> Oh, the podcast, so people do pick up on that, but uh, the beauty is that it definitely makes, it brings this, evokes this, this uh, emotion that you don't get in any other platform. So podcasting is something where you definitely build a connection between you and your listener. Uh, it is, again, it's just a great way to cultivate that relationship through podcasts. Um, opportunities, so again, you have the opportunity to, to inspire, to motivate, to educate. Uh, you are the expert, right? You are the person that is in the line of industry and you are, they're gonna look at you as the authoritative uh, leader, right? So a podcast, again, gives you that, that opportunity to kind of share your passion. Uh, again, you can use it for enjoyment or you can do it to educate or you can do it to inform. Um, it's or motivate. I mean, there's just so many angles. I think a lot of people get tunnel vision when it comes to podcasting. It's like, oh, well, I see a lot of people doing entrepreneurial podcasts uh, if I don't have anything to say or I'm not an expert enough. But again, you just, if you're just passionate about having conversations and press and record and publish um, on a consistent basis, um, you can definitely see podcasting benefit uh, your line of work for sure. Um, let's talk about building brand authority. So as, as I mentioned, you are recognized as the industry leader, right? You're the one behind the mic. So they're going to look at you as, like, okay, this person knows what he's talking about, and they're bringing experts. You're building that trust. Uh, one thing that uh, I'm seeing now is just speaking opportunities. So you do see speaking opportunities. Ever since I started the podcast, I'm now getting asked to speak uh, all around to talk about how to build brand authority with podcasting. So there's a lot of opportunities uh, when it comes to podcasting. So let's say if you're talking about uh, graphics, my man, uh, DG Graphics. Uh, so you're talking about graphic design or whatnot, and, and he becomes... He has you know, a few episodes, and I want to have a graphic design conference. If I'm interested in, in having you speak on that because I've listened to your podcast, I'm going to reach out to Don and say, hey, Don, I, you really know what you're talking about. We have an audience that would totally benefit from design, your design experience. Do you want to come out? So there's a lot of opportunities, again, to, uh, to get speaking opportunities there. Uh, sponsorships and advertising, you know, as I mentioned, $75 million that were invested in podcasting, so a lot of advertising companies and a lot of big companies are now going to podcast um, to be able to seek out sponsorship. Uh, book deals, uh, a friend of mine uh, who has a podcast called The Unmistakable Creative, he's out in California, he just landed a, a book deal through Penguin Publishing, uh, actually about two years ago, so he got signed up for a, a four book uh, deal, uh, all through his podcast, because he they really appreciated what he had, he had cultivated the audience, and now they're like, hey, uh, and he was posting, he was taking the audio and taking parts of, of like just like the nuggets and putting it on medium.com, really great strategy. He put it on medium and this publishing company was looking for writers. They went on medium.com, saw his content, said, hey, we really dig what you're doing. Check out his podcast, it's like, it's a done deal. We want you to, to start writing for us. So he had a four book deal uh, all through, through podcasting. What'd you say medium was? What, what is uh, Medium.com. So it's basically a, a great place. So do we have any bloggers by the chance? Any bloggers? Okay, well, okay. If you're a blogger and you're not on Medium, you're really missing out on a big chunk of market. Medium is a place where a lot of people go. It's just bloggers. It's kind of like just a, a big market for bloggers. So, but the traffic is there. 
So different topics and people just have access to your blog. And, and it's a really great way to kind of expedite your blogging audience. Uh, because, yeah, it's called medium.com. And it's, it's free to sign up. And you start, you know, uh, blogging there on your topic and people will find you. And they're really good at like, like keywords. So like if you have keywords like business, they'll really target people and start promoting it organically. So it's a really great opportunity to, uh, to boost your, your marketing efforts. So um, book deals, affiliate marketing opportunities. So let's say affiliate marketing. Are you guys familiar with affiliate marketing? Right? You familiar? Okay, yeah. So it's basically a referral pay system, right? I refer, uh, let's say, HostGator. Um, or let's say a particular WordPress app, right, that's, that's paid. Uh, I'll say, hey, listen, my WordPress, my audience will really benefit with you uh, from, from knowing a little bit more about your app, and I think they'll really dig it. Uh, do you mind doing an affiliate marketing deal? What happens is that I promote, hey, guys, this uh, uh, podcast is sponsored by HostGator app. Um, if anybody who downloads that app or purchases that app, I get a kickback, so I get like 50%. So now the company starts paying you for, for that referral. So it's a great uh, uh, way to, to start making money right off the bat. So people like, always ask, well, I want to monetize my podcast. This is the way you do it, with affiliate marketing. Uh, that's how you do it. And it's really easy, because all these companies do have affiliate marketing opportunities. So you just reach out to them and say, hey, listen, can I have an affiliate marketing code? I have a podcast. They're going to say yes. And then you just customize the URL. And then you can even mention, like, hey, guys, this podcast is sponsored by and just mention that it's, it's a really cool uh, marketing uh, tactic that you can use right off the bat. So, brand authority. So, uh, my man Damon John uh, Shark, a Shark Tank, he started a podcast, and he has openly admitted that podcasting boosted up his his uh, book sales. So he obviously had a brand authority already, right? Foo Boo, yeah, Shark Tank. Everybody knows who he is. But he started the podcast in conjunction with the book deal. So once he released the book, he started the podcast interview and it talked about, he like, started reading some chapters of the book and it just skyrocketed him and he really boomed. So again, he understood the power of podcasting and of course uh, leveraged his brand. And then uh, our friend, the oil and gas, yes, yes. Christine. Just real quick about Damon. So he's, yeah. he did it for his book. Yes. Is he going to continue to do it? Or is it just for the book? He's and then he stopped. It, he's still doing it. He's still okay. Going. I'm just he's curious. Still yeah, he's still going. Uh, okay. When did, yeah. when did he start uh, his podcast? He started in 2017, I believe. Oh. Yeah, I think he started even before oh, wow. the book came out. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, early All 2017. Right. Cool. And, and yeah, then Mark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead, sorry. No, no, he started, uh, well, he got sponsored right away with Zip Recruiter, of course. That's an easy, you know, he's going to oh, get wow. sponsored out the back. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but he's still doing it. He's still, yeah. And again, I think what a, a lot of people fail to realize as marketers is that there's this, there's this, I guess, approach of being everywhere, right? And the fact that there's only 26% of people listening to podcasts, and there's very evident that the rise of audio will continue growing, and the smart speaker, everything's going to be audio. And now, I like to call podcasting, education, and entertainment on wheels. So, again, convenience. People now just want to listen to podcasts. I know I listen to podcasts when I'm cleaning the house, mm -hmm. when I'm working out. Uh, so that's the beauty of podcasting, whereas it's hard to do that with YouTube, right? Pulling out the YouTube. I mean, I do it. Walking right, right, YouTube. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> right. So it, it's a little difficult with video. Um, but with audio, it's a whole different ballgame, and a lot of people are now jumping on audio because of the fact that there is a rise, and there's a bigger interest uh, in audio. So, uh, Rising Grind, Damon John, he's been killing it. Uh, our friend, Christina, uh, Mark LaCour, who was also a speaker at, at a WordPress meetup. Uh, oil and gas this week. I think, Christina, I forgot what it was, but I think he says... He talked 60, about making now. money from his podcast. Right, right. So his thing is making money. So... And when I, I spoke to Mark, I'm like, man, I really envy you because he has a niche that has like, the much oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. He gets paid, I think, quarterly sixty thousand dollars on his podcast. From Red Wing. Yep. Red Wing. Red Wing sponsor. sponsors mm -hmm. his podcast. Sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. The shoe yeah. people who listen. To yep. Yeah. The shoe people. They pay him. Steel toe shoes, Steel -toe, you know yep. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But he he jumped in the market and he started a podcast, oil and gas. And of course, they said we're on it, and it has downloaded everything. And his nice. speaking opportunities, right? And then he's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. It's everything that we're yep. talking about today. Yep. He's speaking now. He's speaking all over the world. Mm -hmm. Morocco, I think he's going up next. He he helped bring back expos. 
Yeah, that's right. Remember the expo that's thing? Right. Nobody was showing up. That's right. Now he goes around as a spot. Right. And he, yeah. he uh, takes his podcast equipment mobile, and he does podcasts at these conferences. So another cool opportunity that people don't take advantage of as podcasters is that this is your press pass. You can get into any conference you want. You say, hey, this, I'm a podcaster. Uh, I would love to set up and maybe interview some of your, your speakers. Uh, and then they say, okay, sure, that's awesome. Because they know what podcasting is doing now. So they'll say, well, they'll say yes. So I had a friend of mine who did the Comic Palooza. He's into comic books. And just said, hey, listen, I have a podcast. He got a free uh, press pass. And he was there interviewing some of the big celebrities. Wow. Which was worked wonders for, for his, uh, his download numbers. Cool. So yeah, again, so a lot of people neglect the, the whole aspect that it is a press pass. You are press once you start a podcast. Uh, so he's killing it, 60,000, I think, plus Red Wing, and I think he's doing more now. Uh, Macrofab is a electronic podcast. Uh, they do like circuit boards, and they sell them through their podcast because they build authority, and they just talk about like different circuit, I mean, they get real geeky about it, uh, and they just sell them, and they're making, I think, uh, over 100K. Uh, last time I spoke to Christian. Yeah, over, yeah it's, it's pretty, it's crazy. Uh, and then The Message is another one that they do affiliate marketing. Uh, and they make a, a lot of money as well. So again, there, there's a lot of opportunity, speaking, money, sponsorships, affiliate marketing, uh, all because of the podcast and the brand authority they built over time. Uh, I will say though, I gotta be real with you guys, is that if you're getting into podcasting to make money, good luck, I don't you won't survive. Uh, as you know, you have to be in it for the long game. If you're interested in starting a podcast, you can taste it with Anchor, download it and kind of and get a, a feel for it get a, a consistent you know, scheduling uh, routine going and, and see if you like it. But I say give it six months. Six months you'll see the download numbers grow. So if you're not doing it, like let's say you're not really satisfied with podcasts, you say, you know, this is really, I really don't see traction or I'm just really not feeling, enjoying this process within six to a year, six months to a year, then you can decide and say, hey, listen, I don't want to do this. Go ahead, come in. Do they already have the audience? Do you need to optimize it anyway? Yeah, great question. So once, so, what a lot of people don't realize is iTunes is a humongous search engine um, platform. So people, you can go to iTunes and, 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 and enter, let's say, you know, mindfulness or, or healthy tea, and it'll tell you what podcasts uh, are under that. So you do that whenever I mentioned the, the hosting service, right? Let's say Libsyn is one, L-I-B-S-Y-N, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, you'll enter the keywords, and iTunes will, whenever you upload it, it's automatically distributed through all the Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, iTunes. So when people put tea or mindfulness or oil and gas, boom, boom, now they're gonna start generating. So yeah, iTunes is really big on that. So yeah, keywords does play a role. Uh, and that's whenever we talk about branding, make sure that the title, like there's something in the title or tagline that, that um, <coughs> describes your, your business, your line of work. That's very important. We talk about that in branding. So uh, yeah, yeah, great question. What brings them up to the top then? How many listeners? Or is it like a app? iTunes rewards afterwards? you when you're consistent. Okay. Yeah, so if you like drop the ball a few weeks, um, then they'll kind of put you down, uh, down the list. It's not so, like a Google AdWords. Though. Right, okay. right. No, no, okay, that's good. And also, here's another tip, guys. Whenever you launch your podcast, or for those who have podcasts, uh, don't ask for uh, don't ask for reviews, okay? Because those reviews matter. So it's kind of like on Amazon, they reward you whenever you have you know, reviews. So right off the bat, say, hey, mom, dad, cousin, aunt, yeah. uncle, <laughs> do you mind going on to iTunes and, and leaving a, a review? Mm -hmm. iTunes loves that, and they'll put you on the new and noteworthy. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you land the new and noteworthy, that's like the main page. It said they'll put new and noteworthy in new podcasts. Let's say you launch a podcast, it'll go there, and your, your download numbers will skyrocket. So when I did that, I launched with four episodes, Right, and then my first few episodes were, I think I had maybe like 50 or 60 downloads. I landed on the new and noteworthy because I had people reviewing my podcast. That went from 50 to 60 downloads to 5,000 downloads. Wow. Yeah, so it helps. So get those reviews in early, so when you launch that podcast. And if you have a podcast, I encourage you to, to get reviews. Do not sleep on that. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get them in. Yes? Now, what should be the length of like each episode? Like 
Great question. Yeah. 20 minutes, 30 minutes of like ideal length? Great question. Yeah. So because of the attention span, a lot of people are now saying keep it within 20 to 15 to 30 minutes is a sweet spot. Uh, people like Joe Rogan and some of these big name podcasts, they go on for hours, but they have a big brand, right? So people will listen to it. And I always say this, as long as it's entertaining and interesting, people will listen. Uh, my podcast is about 45 minutes. Um, you know, whatever the content, uh, whatever the content, you listen to a podcast, Shane? Oh, the review thing. Oh, I think it's like you're right. I think it really depends on who's speaking yes. and the audience because right. I've seen, I love the two, three minute marketing quickies. Um, but then I've got a tech podcast that's two hours. Wow. But that's he's long. got three or four people and they just go into depth and right. discussions <laughs> about politics and tech right. and all that. So, yeah. yeah. It just depends. It depends. Again, so as long as the topic is, is interesting and engaging, yeah. um, usually that works. The longer it's a group. episode, it's usually it's a discussion. like yeah, one or two yeah. people. Yeah. If, if a guy talked for one guy, talk for two if hours. If it's a talking head type, yeah. Holy yeah, maybe God. 30 minutes. Yeah, 15, 20, yeah 30 minutes would be, be enough. Yeah. I think even 30 minutes might be too long for one guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But sometimes, like for example, I have an interview uh, based podcast, so my conversations go like 45 minutes, and it's okay. I don't really see a big drop off. Yeah. But it's different. Yeah. It's different. So. Yeah, just and just experiment, experiment, and you know, once and I hope, guys, that you're you're building up your email list. You can always go back and then ask your market, and ask your listeners. Hey, listen, um, are you? What do you think of the episodes? Are they too long? Are they too short? You know, so kind of uh, survey your your listeners and see what 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 they're digging. You know, so they might say, Hey, listen, we want to make it shorter. Like you're rambling on too much. <laughs> uh, so that's something that you can you can do as well. It's a great little strategy. So I want to talk about why, how to avoid the biggest podcasting mistakes. Uh, don't become this train wreck right here. Uh, why podcasts sell and the biggest launch mistakes? Because a lot of people get into podcasting for all the wrong reasons. And some people get in it and they're like, let me taste it, but let me just get random and I stop. And, and there's a lot of things that I want to let you know what not to do uh, when you're starting a podcast. Because this will affect your downloads. So this is very, very important. Five reasons why podcasts fail. Uh, Lack of focus, right? There's a lot of people who don't focus on, on the podcast scheduling. So you want to make sure you're on a consistent schedule. Uh, you want to make sure that I release a podcast every Tuesday, uh, every Thursday. Another question that I get a lot is like, how many podcast episodes should I put out? Put out as many episodes you can, you can deliver. Uh, in the beginning, there's, there's some uh, heavy lifting in the beginning, right? You got to learn a little bit of the tech a little bit of adding the, the tags and uploading uh, the graphics, and then there's like the marketing end. So I always say just start with one podcast episode a week. Start with that. Start with a short one. Get your kind of cadence, your rhythm going, and then you can build from there. After a while, uh, if you really want to see your downloads skyrocket, so I do one a week, once a week. But if you really want to see it, it's two to three episodes a week. That's when you'll really see some major, major growth. But work yourself uh, up to it because you can easily burn out with all the work uh, that's involved. And a lot of people really don't get involved in podcasting because they're afraid of the tech and post-production. I'm far from the tech guy, but, um, but I learned along the ways. So I started with one episode. I still stick with it. My download numbers are pretty good. And uh, so again, focus is super important. Get a schedule going. If you go random, uh, you'll, lose, you'll lose your listenership. Because, you know, they'll say, well, I don't know when, if you, Thursday, and then you start on Tuesday, so you lose them. You want to keep that consistency going, okay? It's kind of like, like kind of training your listeners. How long will it take you to do yes. post-production? Great question. So, uh, now I have it down to 10 minutes. So, what I do, yeah, so I'll have an intro, right? So, and I have an outro, and then I'll have the piece. The editing takes a little longer, but I don't do a lot of editing. A lot of people that start podcasts, especially interview-based podcasts, they get really hung up on the ahs and the ums and all that, so they get really self-conscious, and I get it, I was like that. But if you do that, that's gonna probably take you over an hour. But if you just wanna say, hey, listen, you know, let me just go back in the beginning and, and kind of clean it up, or just keep it as is, a lot of people really don't care. Uh, internet, it, you know, it's, it's forgiving. Just don't say like every two seconds. Right, that's right. Yeah, and if you see something that's, you know, like, uh, that's going on and on and on, you're like, I really don't like that, you can do some editing. And here's another uh, resource is people go to Fiverr.com. Are you familiar with Fiverr? Yeah. yeah. People go there and you can hire somebody to edit your podcast mm -hmm. uh, for, you know, less than 20 bucks. An episode? An episode. Actually, I, I found somebody that 
could edit your podcast for less than 20 bucks, like two or three episodes, I think. That was the last time I got, yeah. So be got very, it. very descriptive, though, what you right. have yeah, to do. Right, yeah, be very, exactly, very descriptive. <laughs> F-I-V. But, more, but now I have it down to where I just have it, I would just I have you garage man, so I'll just put intro, slide in the interview, and then outro, and then that's it. You can get a fiber to do an intro for right. you, exactly. and a graphic intro, exactly. you, you can get, they get exactly. specific. Awesome. So question, so if I set my schedule and say every Thursday I want to do my podcast and I'm just starting out so I don't really know much about editing, which I probably really won't do a whole lot, mm-hmm. so would you say, you know, record it, edit it, and then make sure I post it on Thursdays? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. But you can also schedule it. Schedule. You can schedule the release time. And right. Day. So, oh. like, you don't have to be there like, oh, wait, it's Thursday, hit the button. Right. You just get it in there and schedule it for the week. It's like blogging, get Great four tip. or five That's in right. advance and then schedule them out right. for the next month. So who's your who's your hosting company? I'm gonna start off with Anchor. Anchor, okay. I'm not sure. Can, Anchor, can you schedule? I don't think. No, so. I don't think so either. Okay. Mm. So you may just have to just, just send your P's and Q's and whenever, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whenever the day comes. Schedule. Yeah, I want to. What was the? What, yeah. Wait, wait. Okay. You there you go. The blog. Wait, please. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Because some. I mean, that's a great tip, Shane. Is that uh, there are a lot of uh, hosting services will give you a uh, scheduling feature where you can say, Hey, listen, I record it, it's done, ready to go, it's Monday, it comes out Thursday. And you could just upload it to the hosting service and just put the date and the time that you want to oh, release okay. and then do that. But that's usually with podcasting, you have a WordPress site and you can find that feature to schedule out your, your podcast episode. But Shane has a tip where he can kind of hook you up with, so that's awesome. Okay, but that's important again, schedule it to make sure it releases. Yes, so, um. I kind of had an idea. I've been teaching online for five months now in yeah. a private Facebook group. So I, I've extracted all that audio uh-huh. and I'm, I'm creating that into digital products that I can sell. But um, going forward, I was thinking about doing like blogging on a YouTube channel and doing the same thing, pulling the audio out and then putting that on a podcast form right. as well. What do, you, what do you think about? I was talking to somebody earlier how that's becoming like a trend. A lot of people are doing that. And then also having it transcribed so right. that I would have the blog, the right. actual text blog entry. Yeah, well. the only thing I will I will tell you is that you have to be conscious, especially if you're teaching. Uh, vi- you know, the way the verbiage you use on video might not translate to audio. So like, let's say if you're doing something that's visual, the audio might be like, well, what is he talking about? Mm-hmm. So you have to be conscious of that. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really, I'm not, I'm teaching on Facebook Live right gotcha. now, but it's not really, I don't do anything visually. Okay. I mean, okay. so but then it works. basically it's evergreen, if, yes. whether you listen to it or watch it. Right, right. So it's like multicasting, right? So yeah. what you do is you, you And then I use like extract. Kimmy, I think it's called, to, okay. yeah. to transcribe it. Yeah. yeah, do it. Yeah, a lot of people are doing that now, um, especially in my little online marketing space where people are just doing video on YouTube and they're extracting the audio and they're uploading it. It's, it's a podcast as well. And again, you're just knocking, you know, you're knocking it all out the park. And also, a lot of people are doing the same thing what you're doing. They're transcribing and then turning into blog posts for LinkedIn, Medium, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, think of how you can kind of multicast and where you can distribute the piece of, one piece of content and put it on different platforms. Because uh, as you guys know, a lot of us, we learn uh, in different ways. So some people are more visual, audio, et cetera. So that's just a great way to do it. But yes, I encourage that, for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great, great way to do it. Now. Uh, lack of niching. So, is your podcast about uh, nursing, or is it about a male nurse in intensive care unit? Or my friend just put that up there. But for example, let's use my example. Is it about interviewing entrepreneurs, or am I interviewing creative entrepreneurs in the urban industry? Right. I'm niching it down. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a saying. Uh, somebody says that the riches is in the niches. Uh, even the words niche, but the riches in the, in the niches. So you want to niche it down. Somebody asked me also, if I were to start a podcast today in 2018, would I have a podcast about interviewing inter- entrepreneurs? And the answer is no. I would start this completely different. As a matter of fact, I'm going through a rebranding as well. Uh, because you have to go super niche now. Yeah, it's just so broad. And there's a lot of like entrepreneurial interview-based podcasts uh, that you have to be different. You gotta zag. A lot of people are just doing the same old thing. So. Figure out. That's the reason why Mark Lacour, the oil and gas, I think it's just, it's a niche, right? It wasn't just kind of a business. And that's even uh, might be kind of because he's the only one that's doing it right, right now. Yeah. So if you can still do oil and gas, but niche down into upline, downline. Right. And I think he's doing that as well now. I think yeah. he has like a little sub. I know, a little podcast. sucker. <laughs> uh, 
uh, if I'm planning to review books, right, yeah. uh, as a podcast, uh, podcast, then like book is itself is a niche, or do I have to go like say a uh, books on personal development or motivation? You That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You can break it down. Like, well, depending on, are you looking to review all those kind of books, like fiction, nonfiction? No, just... I mean mostly personal development. Okay, then that's what it would be. That's it. That's a niche. That's an awesome. There's idea. a podcast about uh, two women that do the self-help books. They actually do two weeks. They do literally whatever the book says for two weeks, and that's their podcast. Oh, that's cool. The so results. they document the experience. Yeah, yeah. That's they document really experience. They have. They interview each other after the two weeks. What was it like for you? Yeah. You know, just the the crate like uh, the four hour work week. Gotcha. You know. Yeah. It's really kind of interesting. Yeah. They're comedians too, though. So they have oh, a funny the entertaining aspect yeah. to it. But that's a great idea. Sub development, you know, review podcast or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You don't have to be fancy yeah. with the brand. Just keep it simple. And I think that would be cool. That, I would listen to that because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm heavy into that. So if you can give us like the kind of the Twitter version, like kind of like the nuggets. Uh, I think Blinkist and other companies have started out doing that, but if you could do that on a podcast uh, platform, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. What if your podcast is around kind of like who you are? Isn't that kind of a niche in the niches in itself? Like if you talk about books you want to, you've read, or just everything, is it so? Is it so broad? Yeah, it, it is broad. Um, that would work if it was 2015, 16, but now it's a little different now. And here's something that I'm really adamant about. So I was doing a consulting gig with uh, somebody who's starting a podcast, and I don't want to put his name out, but he was like, hey, he showed me his his podcast uh, creative briefing sheet, and it was like, you know, Mark Lawson podcast. So even though we're building personal brand, but the brand is the fullback, right? So you are the personal brand, but don't start a podcast and put your name on the marquee. Why? Because you haven't kind of earned those stripes yet. So he wanted to put Mark Larson <coughs> podcast. And I'm like, you just don't want to do that. Just right off the bat. I get it. But you want to make sure that you put the name. So let's say personal development, review podcast, like that's it. And then they're going to fall in love with you, the host, right? Um, the oil and gas this week, but Mark LaCour is the host. So you want to make sure that the brand is, is very clear and direct, and you're letting the, the person who's stumbling upon your podcast know exactly what the podcast is about. If you're going abstract, like a, a really, let's say, um, a name that doesn't is not related to the topic, make sure your tagline lets us know what it's about. That's another big branding uh, no-no that a lot of people make a mistake on. Um, so my friend here has the this, this Stress Dojo podcast, right? But the tagline has to let me know what is he going to help me out with. The Stress Dojo, helping you fight anxiety, stress, okay? But you have to let me know because if I'm stumbling upon your podcast and you don't let me know what your podcast is about, Stress Dojo sounds great, but you got to let me know what that's about. So uh, that's something that a lot of people get stuck on. Um, so you have to make sure that when you brand your podcast, it's very, very clear. So. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. I, I just kind of went on a tangent because I, I, I was thinking of my friend and he was like, the Mark Larson podcast. I'm like, good. I'm going to be talking about sports. I'm going to be talking about this. So you really do want to niche it down. Your personal brand is your personal brand. But in the beginning, you want to cultivate an audience. You want to make sure that you niche it down to where I understand I'm part of your community. That's exactly what I want. If it's about fishing, you know, I, I want to know about, you know, you have to let me know it's about fishing. You're going to hook me in. Find your tribe. Right, exactly. And yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, go ahead. And, and the, the podcast name has to be like, it's, it's like a domain name, like say a yeah. two person cannot have a same podcast name or... As far as what? Uh, like say, for if example, you know. I chose like say, uh, uh, personal development, personal development uh, okay. reviews, right? Right. And some other person trying to take the same name on his or her po- podcast, then... I think they can. The they can, yeah, yeah. Have the same name? Yeah, so if they're, I mean, if they're going to get on the podcast, they're going to search for you on the iTunes. So if they see your name, they won't touch it. Uh, I haven't seen an issue with that. Um, so do, whenever you have a chance, go home, go to iTunes, and look it up and see if there's anything like that. Or if you have a name in mind, the personal development podcast, review podcast. Uh, I, would, I would work on your branding. I would probably go... Uh, Chop it down. I wouldn't call it personal development review podcast. I would try to figure out a way to make it even more chop it down uh, to one or two words and then have the tagline podcast about personal development book reviews or something like that. So, yeah, but just check. You can check online. Do a Google, you know, Google search. Uh, anybody else? Yes. yes I was sir. just going to give you an example of 
uh, how, because I think maybe it will help this guy. Um, I, so I'm in a very competitive market, which is the uh, weight loss industry. Uh, but my personal story is that, uh, and my niche is because I reach out only to uh, Christians who are trying to break food addiction in their life. Because I, I personally went through that, so it's my story. And I was able to lose 200 pounds uh, nice. through my journey. Nice. So that's what I teach people is how to alter their appetite. And what I, my little tagline is, is how to alter your ap appetite from your idol back to your God. Huh. Oh, anyway. that's a good one. That's yeah. good. Solid. Yeah, yeah. so I, I have a very niche market mm -hmm. and a, a very unique Job. approach to weight loss that takes me out of the red ocean into a, like, you know, a very uh -huh. competitive ocean into a... I dig that. Yeah. Again, it's just finding that wide space. And again, the niche is super important. So when you're starting a podcast, make sure that it's, it's you niche it down as much as possible. So that's super important. All right. Next thing, uh, unrealistic expectations. You guys are small. <coughs> again, people think that they want to make a lot of money. Uh, they're going to make money right off, the, right off the gate when it comes to podcasting. It does take some time, guys. Uh, it's you have to be in it for the long game. You really got to enjoy the conversation You have to enjoy the process. You have to understand that you will build an audience I remember in the beginning getting discouraged. I was like, ah, you know, I'm getting I'm kind of like Plateau so I got the 5,000 jump and then I had people that were like it was like two to three thousand downloads uh, Which was nice, but I wanted to grow. I didn't see growth right until after six months but during that that space that span uh, I was just kind of like I are people even listening? You know, and I know they're listening because Lips and these hosting companies will give you the analytics. So I have people listening to like in Denmark, Norway, all over the world, which is pretty cool. And they are listening. So, but just if you get caught up, because it's a very lonely content creation platform. So you're, it's just you and the mic, and you really don't get that engaging uh, listenership. Sometimes you won't even, they won't even email you back or say, hey, listen tweet me or email me, and sometimes you don't get an engagement. You're like, are they even listening? So don't get discouraged. They are listening to you. You'll be surprised. They just don't, they don't, they won't kind of outright tell you. I've been in pl uh, places where I'm out somewhere, hey, listen, I listened to your podcast. That was really cool, man. I'm like, wow, you listened to the podcast? But, but again, I put out a call to action, but they didn't respond. So again, it, it's getting in for the long game. It does take some time. Uh, so again, setting realistic expectations. Um, the lack of investment, again, just knowing that it does take some time to, to produce a podcast. But once you get your rhythm, like once you understand the kind of the post-production and the recording, uh, it's, it's going to take you, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. You know, you will, you will get better at, at recording and publishing your podcast. So again, uh, the lack of investment, be patient, uh, is very, very important. Imposter syndrome, a lot of people kind of dig into the self-doubt, the fears of there's other people doing something similar to what I'm doing, but nobody has your voice, right? Nobody has your brand, nobody has your style, uh, nobody has your perspective. And I think that if you're engaging and find a way to make it entertaining, informative, uh, people will latch on to that. So again, about be, be patient, but don't let, don't get discouraged when you see other people doing uh, something that's similar to your niche or your, or your podcast. So stick to your guns, launch it, you can taste it, get it six months to a year, and see where it goes, okay? And that's something that I do see a lot. I was, my client that I told you about, he had an issue with that. He's like, there's other people doing this. Um, but that's why I told him to, to switch it up a little bit, just kind of focus uh, on the long game. The four biggest launch mistakes is, again, the bad audio quality. Uh, when you launch a podcast, and I get it, uh, because you have, I, I believe in the whole imperfect start, right? You got to start somewhere. You got to jump in. I get that. Uh, I have my podcast is called No Permission Needed. It's all about kind of getting in there uh, and giving yourself permission to start. But also, you got to make sure that you up your audio game quick, okay? A lot of podcasts that I listen to today, and I get people who say, hey, listen, can you, you know, review my podcast? Let me know. And it sounds like they're recording like in their bathroom. Uh, and it may be some of you that are here that are kind of like, you know what, that's kind of my audio quality. It's done a lot, but make sure you just quickly change it because think about it like this. There's 26%, right, that Americans that are listening to podcasts. But if I stumbled on your podcast for the first time, say, hey, listen, I really think your podcast sounds cool. I'm going to jump on it. I'm going to download and listen. And it sounds horrible. I'm like, oh, this is what a podcast sounds like? No, thank you. I'm out. I'm going to NPR. Right, so make sure that that first impression that you invest in good audio quality. 
And it doesn't take a lot of money, guys. It's, it's like less than 100 bucks to invest in a good dynamic microphone, right? So if you're a condenser microphone, condenser mics capture everything. So if there's a dog barking in the background, you know, the lawnmower, it'll pick all of that. So I highly suggest getting a dynamic microphone because it picks up your voice from, from the front end, not uh, external, not from everybody else. So make sure that you get a good dynamic microphone, uh, you have your laptop, and then just some software like GarageBand or Audacity to be able to record it. And that's it. But invest in the good audio quality. Um, if you need help with that, I'll give you my email and I can give you some, some recommendations. So that's important. A lack of consistency. Uh, if, you know, if you miss one episode, two episodes, you lose traction. I've been there. I've, I've done that. And I've seen my downloads kind of like go like this. And then I miss two to three weeks. And then it drops. It drops, kind of like meetups, right, Christina? Like mm -hmm. if you don't stay consistent <laughs> yeah. with meetups, yeah. uh, you do see like an attendance drop, and people start losing um, that trust, and people just start losing that that uh, that motivation to continue. Constant listening. communication. Yes, it's exactly. Like constant. Yeah, exactly. Communication. And again, it's, it's it's training, right? I mean, we're kind of we're all we're all the same, mm -hmm. right? So when we have that momentum, you know, we stay with it. If I know Chandra's going to be releasing her podcast episode every Wednesday, I'm like, okay, I'm expecting that. I'm expecting you to deliver that because I'm a fan. But if you drop the ball and, and don't do it for two weeks and you come back, I'm going to be like, ah, I don't know if I really trust you. Or I would just catch you when I can. So you want to make sure you have that rhythm going. Yes, Christina. What about some of those podcasts that do the um, the uh, uh, season things? Like they'll, they'll do like six, three, you know, quarterly. And then like, well, I'm going to take a break for three months. I'll yes. be back in the fall. I don't know if that works. It, you know what? I'll tell you what. Yes, yes. So that's something I actually thought about experimenting yeah. myself. Okay, so it does work. Okay. It does work. Because, and what Christina is referring to, guys, is that there are a lot of people that say, hey, uh, welcome, I'm Chandra, I have this podcast episode, uh, it's going to be seasonal, I'm going to give you 12 episodes every Tuesday, and after that, we're going to go ahead and, you know, restart again this month. So, but you're training them, right? Okay. You're already curating, you're letting them know, hey, listen, I'm giving you 12 episodes. Yeah. After 12, I'm taking a break. I'll be back the following month. But a lot of people are doing that, Christina. Well, I like of, the story ones. Right. Oh, like, yeah. That, there right. was really great podcasts about MLMs and how horrible they are. Pardon me if you're in an MLM. Yeah. But, um, and it was a really, really good in depth uh -huh. discussion. It was only 12 episodes. They dropped it once a week for about two, three months. Yeah. And then that's it. Right. It, the, it's over. Now, they, I think they might come back six months later, but it'll be another in-depth discussion. Kind of like the murder right, serial. one. Right, so yeah. serial. Uh, serial. Yes, serial. Serial podcast. Serial. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was a documentation yeah. of, of like a, a murder. Um, like a murder. And they took you to the, yeah, the court and all that. It was, I mean, when that, when that came out, uh, it's, it put podcasting on a whole different level. It got over a million downloads when it first came out. Yeah. Yeah, so it's huge. Uh, it's a very storytelling. That's another thing for you uh, that are starting podcasts, uh, or even those that have podcasts, in incorporate stories in there as well. Uh, it it's shown that a lot of uh, stories um, that are implemented in podcasts do attract more people. Uh, the Mod Podcast is another one big one that gets like over a million downloads, but Serial was the one. That was my seasonal. daughter, my 11 year old, downloads podcasts, the stories. Yeah. And she, yeah. she will listen to those in bed, just listen to stories yeah. on podcasts. And that's, that's yeah. really cool. And that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Christina, that it's 26, it will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So if you want to start a podcast, like now is the time to jump on it mm -hmm. because it's not going to go anywhere. And it's still at 26%. So just play with it. Try it out. Six months. If it's not for you, then drop it. Mm -hmm. Start with a hobby or passion. Talk about what you love to do. If you want to do something that's going to funnel them uh, as far as promoting your service and business, then do it that way as well. Uh, interview people. You build relationships, now, you know, networks, and so on. So again, I, it's just the fact that there's kids now listening. And there's kids now that are starting podcasts. Mm -hmm. They're like in the children book you know, section. And, and there's one that I listen to called The Kidpreneur. Uh, and it's just this kid that's, you know, documents like the lemonade stand and all. It's just brilliant. It's amazing. And I love it. It's just a beautiful time to be creative and, and start a platform. And podcasting, low entry level, easy to start. And there's a, build, a big community that's now growing and listening to podcasts every day, every year. So uh, seasonal is, is a great way to take it. If you say, hey, listen, I don't want to do this every single day for a whole year, for six months, then go seasonal. Say, hey, I'm going to go 12 episodes. And then I'll stop, give myself a break, and come back and start again. That's a great, great tip. So that's, that's another thing for you to consider. Um, let's talk about uh, loss of momentum, starting a podcast. Again, it's, it's 
pod fade. They did a stat, so they said they call it pod fading. Most people, when they start a podcast, it's six episodes, they drop out. That's it. So most people quit after six episodes. Wow. It's called pod fading. <laughs> Uh, so again, just make sure, and I get it, I mean, we all have jobs, kids, families, you know, just life. Uh, so again, you have to schedule, you know, uh, your priorities and make sure, right? Not schedule your priorities, prioritize your schedule, right? Uh, and make sure that you fit podcasting as part of your content platform. But make sure you do that because that avoids this momentum issue. Uh, undefined avatar, so without having an avatar, you don't know who your target is. So we talked about niching. I gotta know who I'm speaking to. So if it's personal development folks, I gotta make sure that I know where they're hanging out. Uh, you know, Facebook groups, so on. If a certain topic, uh, there was a guy who started a podcast on Games of Thrones, right? So he just talked about his favorite show. So he actually went to different groups and different forums and said, hey listen, I wanna make sure where they're hanging out. So when he launched his podcast, he had about like 10,000 downloads in, in the first uh, week because he targeted his avatar. So make sure you define your avatar. You know, say, hey, listen, I have this podcast idea, but is there a market for it? And where are they hanging out? There, there's some there's some legwork in there that a lot of people really don't do. So make sure that you know where they're hanging out. Is it Pinterest, Facebook, uh, Instagram, so on. Um, I have a friend who uh, got some really great download numbers because he was DMing people on Instagram. He said, hey, listen, I know that you like uh, fashion. You know, he's like in the urban industry, he's like, I know you like fashion and this and that. I came out, here's a podcast where I talk about some of the trends, et cetera, and now his downloads are, are doing very, very well. So again, there's some marketing that um, legwork that you definitely need to invest in. So make sure that you define your avatar. So how to phone it, by the way, how are we on time? Yeah, we were but 15 minutes max. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, catch, okay. Yeah. We'll go. How to funnel and convert listeners to using WordPress. This is where you guys uh, fall into place and you might be interested in learning about the key to call of action. So converting listeners, simplified again, the podcast is the call of action and then the website, your WordPress site is the landing page. So the reason why these are, it's, it's a perfect couple is that when you have a podcast, say, hey, um, I have a podcast I'm going to talk about in this episode, go to ChristinaHawkins.com and download this, this PDF. And also, I'll keep you guys updated once I release a podcast episode. You build that list, so whenever you release your podcast episode, you reach out and say, hey, um, by the way, I just released this awesome podcast episode. Check it out. Here's a link to the iTunes. Give it a listen. Let me know what you think. Simple. So it's important to be able to have a website. One thing about Anchor is that if you have, if you have Anchor, you don't have a website. It's just Anchor is your only way to kind of promote your podcast. So make sure you implement some kind of strategy where you're building a list. Uh, and there's a call to action. So make sure that the website is very important, guys. So, so when you say website, so like I have my blog and my yeah. podcast is an extension of that. That's it. That's, so it. that's good. what you're good. talking about. Yep. Okay. Good. And you can bring them back to that, funnel them in. Yes, I'm in. So, uh, that's right. the, you're hosting your podcast on a hosting platform, yes. right? So you get them. Do you attach that to your WordPress to a plugin uh, or what? Yep, yeah, exactly. We're gonna talk about that too. Right. Yep, yeah, it's a plugin that brings them back. Mm -hmm. So again, very, very important to have a website where you can funnel them in, funnel action, your podcast, your voice, right? It's you, you funnel them in, and then boom, boom, that's where you kind of keep them and start building that relationship from there. Um, so creating a compelling landing page, and you guys know if they're focused, be very focused. Um, Make sure you give them information, have it tailored to your industry, and then the customer benefits, you're super clear, and you know you can also include you know testimonials and so on. But again, this is all about, and by the way, excuse the, anybody cat the, the misspelled word? Landing like, page. Landing page, <laughs> landing page, sorry about that. So uh, again, this, this landing page, is, this particular funnel, is something that a lot of podcasters don't do. They'll say, hey guys, uh, I'm Ozil, this is the name of the podcast, no permission needed, and then I go right into the episode. Mention your, your, um, your site. Say, hey guys, I'm Ozil, go to thinkozil.com, where I created this awesome PDF file on how to become a better networker and build more profit in your business. Go there and whatever. And trust me, the podcast is just an amazing marketing funnel to bring people in. So that's, that's the one-two combination that you definitely want to deliver. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, so logical structure, narrative, that's important, having the copy, uh, and then of course using a podcast, WordPress uh, plugin to be able to connect your podcast to the website. Uh, that's also <clears throat> very, very important. So that's what it basically looks like. So this is the Evernote uh, page. So as you can see, there's the call to action, and then you bring them in, they can download, 
uh, whatever you're delivering. So that's, again, a way just to kind of make sure that you're, you're keeping tabs and you're building that relationship with your audience. Super, super important. Uh, let's talk about WordPress uh, plugins. So see, these are the five top WordPress uh, plugins for podcasters. Uh, Lipsit Podcast is, is number one. All right, so this is a really uh, great podcast uh, plugin, great for beginners, also experienced podcasters. I use the Blueberry, but I use Lipsyn for a long time. And this basically, soon as um, you publish, you upload your MP3 to the Lipsyn, uh, go to your WordPress site and go to this plugin. Let's use Lipsyn plugin. You go to this plugin, you add the code, and then it'll show up, and then automatically it'll show on your, when you hit publish, uh, it'll show on your website the, the audio player, plus it will distribute, shoot out all your content uh, to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, and all the other channels as well. So this is great for beginners. Uh, Blueberry is the one that I use, Blueberry uh, PowerPress. Again, same thing. These are very, very similar. Um, this is just works, just works great with WordPress, very WordPress compatible. I use Lipson as a hosting service, but I use the PowerPress uh, plugin. Why? I just like the, the player. So a lot of the times they'll change the, the different players, the buttons. I just like the way the PowerPress button uh, works. But again, Lipson, when you use Lipson, the benefit is that they really give you some killer analytics as far as the drop-off, you know, where they're listening uh, from, and so on. So again, these are really, really solid plugins to get. I have a client that uses Blueberry. He, they, it's a church. So every sermon is converted to a podcast. Okay, cool. And then they upload and they use Blueberry yep. for the for yep. the WordPress site. It, it's a popular one. Yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of people use it. Uh, serious, simple podcast. Another one simple. It's easy to use. Very minimal. Uh, also great for beginners. We have Pod Love Podcast. Uh, the cool thing about this one is you can also customize it, uh, add different colors. Uh, great. It's very techy though. So you have to make sure there's some tech um, things that you really got to kind of dig into. And then this is a really popular one. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Pat Flynn, uh, Smart Passive Income Podcast. He has this one. This is probably the most attractive podcast players uh, out on the market. So if you really want a sexy, and let's say you want to add your brand colors, uh, the Smart uh, Podcast Player is the one that you definitely want to use. And again, it's also great for beginners and for uh, advanced users. Yes. Are they free? Are these all free? Right, are they so premium? All of them are free except this one. Oh, of course. This one, I think it's like <laughs> 10 bucks a month, I believe. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. But this one is really, really cool. Again, it looks good. But again, it serves its purpose, right? You want people to make sure they hit pre uh, press play. And then they can also, oh, this one also allows you to add different of uh, your social media links. So they can actually click on your social media links and they can go and follow you on Twitter, on Facebook. And so can on. you switch it out? So if you decide on one pop, pop plugin, you know, like it six months later, is it easy to switch out now? Yeah, or do you have you to can. kind of start over? Yeah, no, you can just switch out. Yeah, still It's going to pull in all the other... Right, yes, oh, okay. it does. Cool. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Through WordPress. It actually keeps all the information there. Nice. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that's a really good one to kind of dig into. All right, uh, questions, guys? Yes? How tough is it to do... Uh, uh, interview over the phone on a podcast mm -hmm. and get good sound quality. Yeah, that's a, that, that could be a, a challenge. But if you use Skype, I use Skype to do virtual interviews. But if you use Skype, you can do it through audio. Um, but you will sacrifice some audio quality, uh, especially if there's uh, some bad connection there. But you can do it, though. It's, it's, it's been done before. It's, it's hard because the, 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 the person on the other end, it's so hard if they don't have the right audio right. Uh, microphone. You sacrifice it on Skype? Well, Skype, too, as well. Yeah, on Skype as well, but he was talking about on the phone. It, it just sounds kind of like muffled. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you're not able to, you don't have a lot of uh, really uh, leg room to kind of make the audio adjustments on post production. So it's, it's a little rough uh, when you do telephone. So anything you do besides the phone, like Google Hangouts or right. anything over the internet, tends to get better audio. Right. Right. <coughs> Anybody else? Great question. Yes. So if you are. Uh, oh. Yes, sir. If you're not a podcaster and interested in doing a lot of podcasting, but you do uh, digital media, WordPress uh, mm -hmm. design, things of that nature, sure. how would you see monetizing this to customers? Through the podcast. Through the podcast. So give me a little bit more of like your work as far as well, I mean, uh, like if, if, if you're running a business and you're not just running a business podcast. I mean, Christina runs a business and she does podcasting and things mm -hmm. like that. 
How about you do podcast? No. <laughs> 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 she, she's in the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. The WordPress. With the Zero's help, I'll start yeah, one, but podcast. she's not right now. Well, I, to, me, to me, a lot of people have, have said that uh, they, uh, you, you talked about making money and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you don't want to start out, but, but if you wanted to help customers sure. who um, were interested gotcha, now in gotcha. podcasting, yeah. yet you don't want to run a podcast. Right. I mean, uh, we, we did podcasting and, and, and my, my partner is a, has a background much like yours. Music, all of the stuff, creative and everything. And they did a, a series of podcasting and had to start from scratch on um, uh, entertainers over in the Austin area. And they'd do a, 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 a 30 minute interview okay. and then podcast. And it went over well, yeah. but it was content calendars, uh, consistency, there's yeah. so much involved. Yeah. And if you're running a business, sure. uh, trying to see the best way to think about that, or is it something that you, for a small, we market to small business owners, right? Uh, and, and and some of them ask about podcasts. Yeah, you, you give them to us. Yeah. Refer to <laughs> that's right, that's right. Yeah. You, I would refer to us. I would refer to somebody that that's what they that's do. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I yeah. My, my thought would be more to uh, you talked about an affiliate uh, partnering. Yeah. Uh, 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 wife labeling. Right. Uh, it seems to me the best. Route that, that's to, the best to way. That. Yeah. Exactly. So let's say you are now. I understand the context of your question. So if you have something like a WordPress or let's say your design, you start looking for products. So I would go to Adobe and go to different app developers or, or WordPress uh, site developers and say, hey, I really like what you're doing. Would it be okay if we do an affiliate marketing deal where I can maybe review your product? And they'll send you, you know, their products or give you a trial on their services, and then you talk about that on your podcast. Say, hey guys, I just got this great app or this great WordPress plugin by this company. Uh, this is, works great to make you know, facilitate your process, and, and just give them business tools and resources uh, that are paid, right? And then you do an affiliate and say that this is an affiliate, you get 20% off, and then that company will pay you. I think that's just the easy way to go about it. So that's just, and then you build it up and eventually once you build that up, sponsors will, will really be attractive. Spo- that would really be a great strategy to attract sponsors because if they see that you're very kind of business and product service centric, sponsors may say, you know what, this person is very like, he's giving out some products and service, he's really doing a great job promoting. Um, let, let's sponsor this and then they'll, you know, they'll pay you anywhere from 250 an episode. So HostGator sponsored my show for six months, they pay me two fifty per episode, so that's not too bad. Right? Two fifty per episode is not bad, and I did a pre row and a mid row, and that was it. Super simple, thirty seconds. So there's ways to make money. Um, you can really turn the key early on. A lot of podcasts just do it and they get burned out. But I say early on, go for the affiliate marketing. That way, you kind of get a feel to kind of make some money right off the bat. Are there companies like if you're not a podcaster, like? Right. It, I think maybe what he might be asking too is me, digital marketer, people come to me like, how do I get word out? You know, how do I start podcasting? Well, I'm not going to do a podcast for them. I'm not even going to strategize for it. I need to give them to somebody to help them start a podcast. Right. Um, are there firms other than yourself? Right. Are there firms that are like, hey, we're we're beginning to end podcasts. Right. We will we will get a calendar set up for you. We will <laughs> set up the editing for you, we will post it for you, we'll market mm-hmm. for you. Are there companies out there like that? No, but we gotta start one. Uh, hello! <laughs> <laughs> we gotta start one, what am I doing? Hey-o. I guess I'm not, I'm not, I have work to do. Uh, no, that's a great idea. So there's a company, there's uh, they're friends of mine, uh, they have, uh, it's called the Sphere TV Network, I don't know yeah. if you're Gary, Gary. Uh, so he has a, he does like a podcast in studio where you can record your podcast mm-hmm. and it's kind of like mm-hmm. a do, they do it all, right? There's a right. turnkey podcast. So they're doing that. Uh, but no, not as in depth as far as kind of, that's a great idea though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I do uh, podcast consulting. So I help people from brand, take it from brand mm-hmm. to launch. Mm-hmm. I do do that. But uh, there isn't a company. And again, I think you're going to see that. It's so early. Like it's so early. Against no better time when when it's early. Exactly. It's funny because uh, a business coach of mine told me the same thing. Yeah. He said you really yeah. got to jump on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, real quick story. I was really resistant about becoming a podcast guy for Houston because I was involved in other projects. And he was like, "You're podcasting. You're doing a thing," which kind of led to me starting Pod Houston, which was basically a community for Houston-based podcasters. 
but because I love podcasting because I believe in it, now I'm kind of, I'm seeing the value and, and I love helping other people start podcasts because I think there's some true value and some benefits in starting one now. So uh, that's something that I have to think mm -hmm. about. So now I'm, I'm taking the role of the podcast here in Houston, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Yes. Um, so how do you feel about uh, integrating Facebook Live into my podcasting? Because that's kind of the, the way that I'm going to go. Yeah. But focusing on podcasting during the Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. So, that's so as, as a purist, some people say keep them different. <laughs> You know, it's Facebook Live is different from a podcast. However, I think there is, I've seen a, lot, a big trend as well as people using Facebook Live. And I actually call it a podcast. Like, I have a podcast. Like, What's a Facebook Live show? Is that a podcast? Because podcast is the audio. But you can do that. Um, or, you know what I'm seeing too, strategy challenge is I'm seeing people say, go Facebook Live and talk about a topic and say, hey, uh, by the way, if you like to listen to the full podcast episode, Go click on the link below and then you funnel them back into the link, into the episode. So you kind of give them like a teaser mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning. Uh, that's another strategy that I'm seeing a lot of people have success with. But you can do that. You can do that. I think, again, it's Facebook Live, doing live streaming and all. It can just be conscious of, of, the, of the platform because they're different, right? It's a different audience, Facebook Live in comparison to audio. So, um, and also the audio may sacrifice a little bit of the audio quality uh, doing a Facebook Live. Uh, and trying to extract that audio from there as well, rather than you actually, and, unless, unless you're mic'd up. So yeah, make sure, I'm and by the way, if you're doing Facebook Live, guys, like, please mic up. Like, there's a lot of people, like, there's just another thing, and the mics don't cost a lot of money. Try to get a mic, a your <coughs> mic or microphone. Have that audio quality really nice. A lot of people are missing the mark, and I think they could have better Facebook Live shows if they had microphones. Uh, to ensure uh, I think, audio quality. So that's, I think this one is a mic. Yeah, I think it was maybe about 45 bucks. 45 but it, bucks? Yeah, yeah, but it connects to your um, audio. Yeah. Um, it's got a clip, so it, it'll clip right here. Um, okay. So, But then the one I just got that I tried to fix up is 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a wireless mic, so that hooks up to here, and then the speaker would have right. a wireless with right. mic'd up. Yeah. There's the road was about three hundred dollars, which nice. sits on top that of this sucker. Yeah, it catches great. Um, but the road microphones are awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm open to answer any questions. I know we uh, we're running close on time. So guys, Pod Houston. So we are launching. It's a monthly meetup. I just want to make sure that I, I share this. If you guys are interested in kind of learning more about podcasting and being a part of a, of a, a community where we share, we support each other, uh, Pod Houston. It's free. We have. Uh, you can go to our Twitter. Our Twitter's not really really active, but we have our Instagram, we have a private Facebook group, so if you go to podhouston.com uh, backslash crew, uh, or look up uh, Pod Houston on Facebook, join us, it's very engaging, we have people in the group here that are involved, uh, I'm always answering questions, uh, giving you guys podcasting news, anything that's coming out, new apps, I think Christina's in it as well, mm -hmm. so uh, we have about over 180 people there, uh, it's growing, uh, our next podcast meetup will be in February, I believe. Yeah, there is six. And we have speakers. So we have speakers from like marketing, and we talk about monetizing, branding. Uh, it's a free meetup. I highly, highly encourage that. And we're really building up to starting, a, a, having a podcast uh, conference here in Houston. That's a little, yeah, a there little news there. Well, uh, you're going to be a speaker at the WordCamp, so yeah. just prep yourself for that. Right. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> we're ready. So again, you can connect with me at thinkozil.com. Of course, that's my Twitter handle. Instagram, you can email me at iwanttopodcast at gmail.com. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I, I was like laying. I was like, I need a good name. I'm not, that's that's kind of cheesy, but I went with it. I want a podcast at gmail.com. And I do do uh, consulting. So if you guys are ever interested in really kind of going one-on-one -on -one with it, I do help people start their podcasts. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Yes, sir. As you were getting started, yes. Uh, did you have any experiences uh, getting press passes to uh, conferences? I did it. I did it. And, and was that relatively straightforward? Yeah, you yeah. Go no, in and say I'm a podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so this would happen. Yeah, so I had twenty thousand dollars or one download last week. I'm I a know, podcast. Right? I know, right? Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not show up the download. <laughs> a few followers, that's the downloads. No, uh, 
it, it was funny because I didn't even know, and I, I saw a friend of mine on Facebook, and he was traveling to all these conferences. I'm like, dude, these like social media marketing world. I'm like, you're getting into the, all these like high ticket conferences, a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a two thousand dollar ticket. Yeah, so he was going all over, and I'm like, how are you doing? He goes, well, some of these people are actually, uh, oh, because of the podcast. And he had about maybe like five thousand downloads. So talk about like getting in. And he said, yeah, he goes, I covered their, their, their conference. I said, hey, this, I'm a podcaster. Uh, it's, it's very related to what social media marketing. I said, I would love to kind of come in. And he was getting, and some of the places were actually paying for him. He didn't go to social media and pay for his ticket, his flight, but they paid for his ticket. He stayed there for three days. Nice. Yeah, and then uh, some other conferences in Canada got him as well. So, yeah, you are pressed. And he was like, you're not doing this? I'm like, well, I don't know you can do this. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take a note. Let me jump on this. Yes, sir. Yeah, you can post your slides on your website. Oh, yeah, I will. Yeah. I will, yeah. I'll, it'll that. be on the meetup yeah. page and I'll the send Facebook you, page. See me, you have and I've recorded it, too, so. Okay. And, and if you guys have any questions, I know it was kind of like you're talking about, you know, mistakes and just kind of overview on podcasting, but if you have any questions concerning tech and like software and hardware, uh, where to start, you just, any questions at all, branding, you know, you could just email me. I'll be more than happy to help you out with that as well. I know we did talk about tech and hardware, but uh, I'll give you guys also some recommendations on packages that are like less than 100 bucks that are awesome for, for podcasting. So that's it. Any, any other questions? <laughs>